Hello again, and it's time for another project. We're going to do a little bit of router work on this Pug Life template. And the idea is we've got the little pug in the middle there. We obviously have the words Pug Life written above and below. This is just on rough fencing wood. Just take five minutes to sand it down. I like to use a belt sander. But beforehand, you can see it's quite rough looking wood. So any knots, you're going to have to cut those out try to find the best you can but it's really cheap to purchase and when you compare it next to the one i've actually sanded the back of this one for a couple of minutes you can see the difference in there how them two pieces have come out so for the, what you pay for fencing wood or gravel boards i believe they're called you can't go wrong for someone it's just starting out and you don't want to go out and get fancy fancy woods so as always for me we've got our template sorted we've printed it off this is the way i do things Literal bit of carbon paper, nice fresh carbon paper underneath, and you draw around that with a pencil. I prefer to use a pen just so it stands out better against the white background. And you just draw around. It takes five minutes to do. There's other methods where you can use the image in reverse. You can turn it over, put acetone, I believe, and then rub it on with a spoon. Some people have been known to stick the paper straight to the wood, and you might get away with something like this one and just literally just route over the top. And then sand it all down afterwards. But for me, good old pa uh, carbon paper or graphite paper. And there we've got it. So we've got our nice little image today. I've got my biro or pencil and mark off the areas that we want to remove. So basically looking at that, we are going to remove all the blacked out sections. Once they've all been routed out, we'll literally just basically fill them back in again with some paint. Spray or paint on the brush, just fill it all in, give it a nice sanding down, a bit of linseed oil as always, a bit of varnish, and this little project will be finished. So before all that, we've got to obviously route it out. The good thing about drawing around it, you can use this template over and over again, saving on paper and obviously on your inks. So there's our image. It's going to be 6 inches by 14. We'll see how the proge uh, project progresses. If it's a bit boring like that, we might come in and do the old rough edged effect. You know, like a bit of driftwood or something, I don't know what we call it. But anyway, for now, we're going to concentrate on routing it out. For routing purposes, I like to use a little CNC bits. These are eBay or Amazon. And they're fairly cheap to purchase. And they're like pin needles. I do have one here ready to go. They cover a different degree of angles on the end. Personally, I don't find a lot of difference between a 15, a 20 and a 30, but you can see from there. Now, they have a small shaft on them, a 3.175 millimetre. Now, that will fit your Dremel if you have the router Dremel attachment, no problem. But if you've got a quarter inch router like mine, you need what they call an adapter reducer collet. And it's basically just a little tube, 6.35 millimetre or quarter inch. You slide your little CNC bit into there. That will now fit your router no problem and we're going to set it to about three millimeters you can buy depth gauges out there i just buy myself a bit of wood cut down the size as i like i know this one's three millimeters we'll call it because that just fits in nice and flush so that is the depth i use on 90 percent of my projects and that's plenty deep enough for little projects like this or even if you're incorporating with resin colored resin for indoor projects once we've gone around all our lines and I remember, and I do say it on all my videos, you want to route out up to the line. Because we're removing the inside of this one, we just want to route out right up to there and right up to there. We never route out on the line on 99% of projects. Reason being, with the thickness of that, we're going to go down 3 millimeters. If you were to route on that line there, obviously you've widened that, should I say. And on that line there, well that centerpiece, will be really narrow. So you've got to route up to the line and up to the line. Same round here, there's a little section, excuse me, there's a little section on the nose here. We want to route up to that section there and up to that one. If you're just going to go around there on those lines, by the time you've gone around there with your CNC bit, that section would disappear altogether. You'd have routed all that out. So just be a bit careful. Obviously, if it was out set, we'd come in again and route out just up to the line and hopefully when it's all the cnc bits been done 
you should still be able to see a little bit of pencil line projects like this it doesn't really matter if we come off and that little is a slightly bigger or this has gone a bit slightly smaller it's still going to look a nice little project hopefully when we're done now when we've done all our lines with our cnc bit i like to use these end milling bits and remember these are just the little bits i use this profile bits liner bits spiral up cuts there's loads of different bits out there it's just finding one that you're comfortable with and for good old ebay specials amazon i've got no trouble with these we will pop that in the same little adapter up to that we will set it to our three millimeters for depth wise you'll notice as i'm doing this i will remove certain sections and then we can just use this and put that straight on where that piece has been removed and that will be our depth and we'll use that to clear out all the areas that have been marked off with the biro pen or pencil mark and like i say we'll skim over quickly with a flexi cable on the end of a dremel just grab mine here quickly just something like that just a little clearing out sections bit of sanding down mouse sander bit of paint sanding again oil and varnish and this little project will be finished okay let's crack on and get this one done cnc bit first Okay, so you can see from that, we've made it all the way around with those N milling bits. Don't worry about the dust and stuff. Obviously, that'll all be gone once you clear out the inner sections there. And you notice as we went along, I basically just used the CNC bit just to remove out these smaller details. And they will be nice depth gauges. When we come in with the N milling bits, remember, we can set it in the router and set it to that depth. And hopefully that'll be the nice same depth to remove all the rest of the areas that have got the lines on. So it's just a simple case of removing the CNC bit. You will get a lot more projects out of that. I lose count of the amount of projects I get, I must admit. And we just simply pop that in onto that little barrier. They do come without the barrier now, so I will leave descriptions and links, should I say, to all the bits used. So if you can't find them with the barriers on, they are still the same piece. In fact, if I just get quick looking here, two seconds. I'll just quickly there, just show you. These are the exactly the same pieces, more or less. But as you can see there, there's no little barriers on him. Right, so we pop that in the router. As before, we'll set it to that depth there. And basically just start removing all the areas that are left with the pen marks on.
Okay, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around with those N milling bits. And you can just about make out the pencil line there, look, all the way around. So we obviously we have all that to clear off. We'll use a mouse sander for that. And also with these kind of little projects, I do like to use the flexi cable. This is just a cheap, cheap eBay special. With an engraving bit, you'll get a packet of 30. And they come in all different shapes and sizes like so. We're going to get it. There we go. And I get one with got a nice flat bottom on it. And not too big. And that's just enough to get inside. And all we want to do is just to clear out these sections here. And basically go around the old piece to get off these little fluffies, as we call them. So we'll get a nice general tidy up with that. Good mouse sander, just to skim the old piece off. And then even a bit of sandpaper. I tend to just roll mine up into little tubes like that. And that's just enough just to get inside. And just take off the edge all the way around. Okay, we'll tidy this all the way up. And then we'll decide if that's going to be the finished project. Once we've popped a bit of paint in, obviously. And a little finished or varnish or something to finish it off with. Or if we're actually going to cut the ends off. Let's give a nice tidy up first. Okay, that's enough tidying up and sanding down. We used a little mouse sander, remember? Then we went in with the flexi cable, a nice little engraving bit in there, just to give it a little bit of tidy up and a bit of sandpaper, just take those little edges off. When I went around the sides as well, we deliberately just took little sections away like so. Like so so that's to see on here. And I will do that again once we sand over this. Just to make a bit more what's the word we're looking for rustic looking anyway it is what it is now normally at this stage i would literally put my paint in now i like to use painters touch paints but that is empty and the rest of my colors are empty the the local store shop where i used to purchase it's all shut down now so i've had to go online and order all those so um, while we're waiting i basically just nipped out and we're going to spray this one black, just 151 black gloss. Now I've read the instructions on a previous project. I didn't bother with the other paint and it did say put a primer underneath. But it don't mention of any primer on the back there that I can see. So I suppose you could actually spray that straight to the wood like that. Once it's nicely dry, we just sand it over the top. But because I have purchased the primer, like I just said, I used on another project. I am going to put a little bit of primer in here. One, hopefully, it might just smooth out those back sections. And it's not overly rough, to be honest. And it's also will seal in the side walls. Just stop any bleeding running into these grains of wood and stuff. To be honest, I can't recall having a lot of bleed on any pine or this rough, rough fencing wood. And remember, that's all it is. A little piece like that would end up in landfill somewhere. So, you could actually get away with just spraying the paint on. Because I have purchased the primer, I'm going to put it on. Okay, let's get set up and we'll spray this one down. Right, that's all nicely sanded down. I must admit, that's took longer than where I actually just put the paint. So I do prefer my paint and brush into the lettering and the design itself. It just took a lot easier. And with over sanding it, I did start off with that belt sander. And the only problem with that, if I can just get hold of it for you. Good old numb belt sander there. You can see the state of that paper now. And as I was... Sanding that, it would basically flatten it down and just pushing all the paint into the routing out sections. So we had to go around afterwards. It didn't take seconds really. 
basically pick out all the paint. So that wasn't one of the best options. I don't think I normally use a belt sander to sand off with. I don't know why I picked it on that day, but anyway, we did. So we ended up going with the Orbital sander just to finish it off with, and that came out a lot better. Now, by mistake, if you remember me saying about we've worn away the side bits, and we were going to do a bit more, as I've had the overlay with the spray paint, I quite like the look of that. So I literally just sanded it all off, and it left us that little frame round, and I literally went round with the can afterwards and just sprayed the sides to finish it off. And we're going to leave that on there. So that wasn't part of the master plan, as we say, but it came out... Quite a nice effect, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. As regards to bleeding, there is a little bit, and you've got to really look sharp. And like the rest of us, we've been very picky. I don't get a lot of bleeding with painting with a brush. I don't know if it was just a spray. I don't think the primer was uh, achieved anything, but if you get really close, we might not even be able to get it in. Can we get it? No, it's not evident, is it? There is a little bit, basically, around here somewhere. Here. If you can get it in focus. And there's a little bit somewhere else on one of the paws, I think. The tail, maybe, I don't know. Maybe a little bit up there. But I've been very, very ultra picky there. You know, if you're just going to hang that in your garden somewhere, it's a free gift for somebody. I'm sure they're not going to complain about that one. Now, this stage of the uh, game, should we say, I would normally come in with boiled linseed oil just to darken that down and to darken the sides down. But obviously, because we've painted them, there's no need to do that. So we're just going to go straight in with the varnish. One, because I do, I do think it just finishes the little project off nicely. And two, it gives a little bit of a shine. So just simple, one five one today. Doesn't matter what varnish. This won't be the best in the world for outdoor projects. If you're going to hang this indoors in a conservatory, under a canopy somewhere, a porchway, this will be ideal. But if it's going to be out in the elements, you really want to invest in something that's going to make it last a bit longer. So for me, it's just going to be a simple case of quick shake shake we will go outside when we do this and hopefully when we spray this on we'll just darken things down slightly and that black lettering will certainly stand out a lot more not forgetting to draw the sides they will come up really nice like so we'll let this dry it takes a matter of minutes and then we'll do another coat on top i'll do it three or four times try and build it up and then we'll see what it's like we'll come back when it's all been nicely sprayed Right, that's it. This little project is finished. So I'll give it three or four coats of the 151 clear lacquer. Just to give us a little bit of a finish there. Personally, you could go for it another three or four times. But for me, that's near enough for what I want. For these little, little projects on basically a scrap bit of fencing wood. The sides are quite nice with that black spray paint on there. And we just to say got away with it with the lettering and the little dog himself. Now there still is paint bleed on here. Remember, before your paint goes in, you can seal your wood with some wood sealant. I normally just spray varnish. I've done certain projects where I've not put anything on and they've come out really nice. However, this is a first for me. I'm going to say first because I just cannot recall the last time I had any paint bleeding. So I'm not overly happy. And if I can get right in, just there, look, you can see little bits around the eyes here and across the top of the nose. And I believe there might be some little speckles down here towards the feet. But I am being ultra, ultra picky. And I believe there's a little bit more up there. And that's what they call bleed. And that's basically where we've cut into the grain of the wood and the paint's bled into the wood. And it won't matter how much you sand that down, you will struggle to get rid of that. So just bear that in mind. Before any paints go in, try and seal it with something. But it also depends on the wood itself. But this is the first for me with that bleeding like that. But it's a free gift for somebody on basically a bit of fencing wood. So we're not going to lose any sleep over it. And that's it. This little project is finished. So it measures in at 6 inches by 14. Little bug life plaque. Remember we use our... CNC bits to do all our lines with. Little end milling bits for the clear out. I will put this, links in the description, should I say. And then normally I have painters touch paint, which I have ordered now and they'll be here tomorrow, hopefully. But for this one, we have to use a bit of spray. 
We did put primer underneath. I think that was a pointless exercise, but if you've got it, you might as well use it, I'd say. And then to finish off, 151 one again. To finish it off and give it a nice shine. And that's it. We've got a project in the end. If I'll be honest with you, I'm not overly uh, happy about it. That little bit of bleeding is bothering me. But like I say, it is a free gift, so I'm free wood, basically. So we can't complain too much, can we? And that's it. Pug life. Nice little project to do. Give it a go. Enjoy yourself. You're going to make mistakes. I'm up to 550 plus projects. And even I'm still getting it wrong. So don't be disheartened if things don't work out as planned. There's always another day. And you'll always find another piece of wood somewhere, I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching.